there wouldn't be a Cadillac CTSV wagon or even a Magnum SRT8 wagon without the Corvette powered Buick Roadmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, this says before you buy a 1994 to 1996 Buick Roadmaster station wagon. Now, although it did start production in 1991, it wasn't until the 94 through 96 model years that this old grandpa finally decided it was time to give the old blue pill a try. And that little blue pill came in the form of a 350 cubic inch pushrod 5.7 liter LT1 V8. This thing was pulled straight off the same model year's Chevy Corvette. Yeah, God. For all you millennials out there, this is a Corvette I'm talking about. Okay, okay. It was a slightly detuned version of that Corvette's engine, making only 260 horsepower as opposed to the Vets' 300 horsepower, but... This SOB had 335 pound-feet of torque, which was perfect for towing, or for all you takeover people out there, was perfect for burnouts. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hey, that 5.7 liter LT1 sounds like the same one the Impala SS had, and you would be correct, but does the Impala SS have a sick-ass sunroof? No. Does the Impala SS have a third row frickin' seating? Yeah, I thought so. And what about this super rad fake wood exit, huh? Pfft, yeah. Take into account you can transport a family of eight with a trunk full of groceries while towing a boat and still have enough power to put that Civic trying you at the red light to shame. All for thousands less than what an Impala SS of the same years is going for these days. You see why the Roadmaster wagon is starting to look like a better choice, huh? Yeah, that's right. I said thousands less. Even cheaper than the Roadmaster sedan, which makes the Roadmaster wagon the cheapest quote-unquote Impala SS you can currently buy. Hell, you can even literally turn this wagon into an Impala SS clone. They'll just throw in the Impala SS grill and emblems and paint it black and the rims. Everything literally fits. Now the wagon isn't without its faults. Uh, you can expect the usual LT1 related problems such as intake manifold gasket issues which end up leaking coolant into the oil. Uh, there's also water pump failure which then leaks into the OptiSpark system that's another pain in the ass and then there's obviously a bunch of faulty wires and sensors but worst of all the biggest sin it's only being limited to a top speed of 108 miles per hour <sighs> although the engine is easily capable of hitting speeds over 150 miles per hour a simple tune and speedometer governor bypass should take care of that problem easily not to mention the LT1 absolutely loves simple bolt-ons like cold air intakes, headers, and exhaust, which will bump up the power levels significantly. In my opinion, the station wagon is making a comeback. Real soon, the value on these big old land barges will be going up big time. If you're in the market for 90s Impala SS, but you want to stand out from the herd, consider a Buick Roadmaster Station wagon. What about this super rad fake wood X? And what about the super rad fade wood? <laughs> and what about the super rad fade wood X? <laughs> and what about this super rad fake wood X? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Take what about the super rad fake wood X? And what about the super rad fade wood? 
<laughs> and what about the super rad fan water X? <laughs> and what about the super rad fake water X's, huh? <laughs> yeah.